I'm actually recording this right now. I just started recording. Um, that way we could uh, just go through each section so you could have some type of review so you can feel more familiar with what you're going to see on the test tomorrow. Now, beginning with uh, 7.3, that was the first section that we dealt with uh, logarithms, right? So log base 2 of 8. Oh, what's the answer there? We already know that the answer is 3, right? We need to know how logarithms work. You take this base 2 to what power gives you 8? Oh, the answer is 3. So over here, the answer is 3, right? That's what we need to know for section 7.3. But in reality, that's too easy. Why? Because um, you could actually go to that log calculator that I showed you online, and you could just type in log base 2 of 8, and it'll give you the answer 3. So you don't need to actually know any of that. But what I will do to verify that you actually know this stuff, instead of just saying log base 2 of 8, I might say log base 2 of 8 to the 3x power. Yeah, log base 2 of 8 to the 3x power. Because the, uh, the online log calculator won't do variables, all right? So how does this work? Uh, you would say, okay, let's rewrite 8 as uh, 2 to the third. So you have log base 2 of 2 to the third, and you still have the 3x power over here. And you, we all should know that a power to a power, we multiply, so we end up with 9x, right? This is really a 9x. And of course, log base 2 of 2, that eliminates, and the 9x comes down. Final answer is 9x. So this first section, 7.3, is ridiculously easy. I'm only going to give one or two questions like this um, because they're so easy, right? We're going to just have one or two questions, and there will be an x involved. That way you can't just type it into the calculator. Let's move on to 7.4. Now, I do feel that 7.4 was such a long time ago, and it required some thought, right? Um, not on the uh, equation parts. I mean, the equation parts are pretty easy. Like, check this out. Let's say I wanted to solve this logarithmic equation, and x is inside the logarithm, right? And you want to get rid of the logarithm. Well, you do the inverse operation of a logarithm, which is raising up both sides of the equation to become exponents. So you're going to put a base 5 right here and a base 5 over here. That way it eliminates. And hey, Siri, what's 5 to the fifth power? 5 raised to the fifth power is 3,125. There you go. So we have 3 minus x equals 3,125. And then we subtract 3, subtract 3, cancel that out. Negative x equals 3,122. And then we need to get rid of the negative in front of the x. So we divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. Final answer is x equals negative 3,122. Now, the, uh, I mean, this is your answer. But if you're looking at, at the multiple choice answer and you see this answer, don't select it yet. Please take one second of your time and make sure that inside your logarithm, you don't end up with a negative value. Remember, you can't do a log of zero. You can't do log, common log zero, ln of zero. You can't do any type of log based on anything of zero, and you can't do logs of negative values, all right? So I'm thinking, wait a minute, I can't do log base five of negative 3,122, but when I plug it in, it's all good, because when I plug this negative 3,122 right in here into this x, this negative sign with that negative sign become positive and I'm good. So the answer really is x equals negative 3,122. But I'm just explaining this because just in case, if you end up with a negative in here, you know you cannot do the, the, the logarithm of a negative. That's why you would say no solution, right? If that, were to, if that were to happen. If you end up with a negative in here at the end of it all, you would say no solution. This is an extraneous solution. But in this case, when you plug in this negative number and there's a negative sign right in front, a minus negative does change it to positive. So we are all good. Everything's good. So that section is ridiculously easy um, from 7.4. Now, the other section that's a little bit more challenging is this guy right here, solving logarithmic inequalities, solving logarithmic inequalities, all right? Now, what's the difference between an equation and an inequality? An equation is an answer, boom, x equals 5, x equals 7. An inequality is an area of answers, like x is greater than 5 or x is less than 7. I, I don't know right? It's an area of answers. So 
Um, mistake number one that students would make is that they would just solve this like they would any other equation. And that's what I'll do right now. Check it out. I'm going to go log base, uh, log base 9 to get rid of it. I'm going to raise both sides to become powers of base 9, right? That way, they eliminate. That way, the power, the, uh, the x plus 2 that used to be a power now comes down. The inequality comes down. And the 6 minus 3x comes down. And this is all correct. This is totally fine. You could be following along. This is great. Um, let's continue solving. We're going to add 3x, add 3x. We're going to, I might as well do two steps in one, subtract 2 and subtract 2. So what do I get? I end up with, oh, wait a minute. I said plus 3x, not minus 3x. So I end up with uh, 3x plus 1x is 4x. This guy cancels out. I have the greater than symbol. And 6 take away 2 is 4, and this guy cancels out. So I have 4x is greater than 4. Divide both sides by 4. I did not divide by a negative, so it is x is greater than 1. Now, a lot of us will do this correct work. It's correct. It's good. And you're going to see that multiple choice answer, and you're going to select it, and you're going to hit enter, and guess what? It's going to be wrong. What? Yeah, because we're still missing this other part of the problem. What's the other part of the problem? That because it's an inequality, we're going to be talking about areas of answers on a number line, and we know that this inside value of any logarithm cannot be zero, and it cannot be negative numbers. You can't do log base 9 of negative 3 or log base 9 of zero. You just can't do that. This inside value has to be greater than zero. So that's actually another part of the problem that I don't want you to forget to do. This guy right here has to be greater than zero. Because you can't do logarithms of zero, you can't do logarithms of negative. And this is also true for this guy over here. This binomial over here, it has to be greater than zero. So there's these two additional parts, okay, that we need to do. Don't forget. Because it, there will be a multiple choice one, and it'll just have that one, and you might pick it, and it's going to be wrong because you got to do the other parts of this problem. Now, if I do x plus 2 is greater than zero, and I solve it, I will get x is greater than negative 2. And let me box this in in blue. And this other one over here, subtract 6, subtract 6. I'll have negative 3x is greater than negative 6. I will have to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. It does cancel out. I end up with x is less than, because I divided by a negative. You have to flip that inequality symbol, 2. And we have three answers here, guys, three inequalities, which are really areas of answers, right? We know that x is greater than negative 2. It could be negative 1. It could be 0. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4. Anything that's greater than negative 2. Anything that's greater than 1 would have to be like uh, 2, 3, 4, or 1.1. All the values that are greater than 1. This one is less than 2. We're talking about an area of answers. So there's no way around it. We have to go to a number line. So let's do that. I'm going to do a quick sketch of a number line. I'm going to put like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to graph this guy in blue. X is greater than negative 2. Greater than is to the right. I'm going to do this one in red. X is greater than 1. Greater than is to the right. And I'm going to go this guy over here. X is less than 2. Less than is to the left. Okay? So the question is, because I had three parts of an answer, because I had three answers, where are all three answers represented? Where is the overlap piece of all three answers? So if you extend your colors, this blue one goes this way forever. The red one goes this way forever. And I already extended the black one going to the left forever. Where is the triple overlap piece? It's not right here on this side because that's just the black and the blue. Right here it is. It's black, blue, red. It's between 1 and 2. Okay, it's between 1 and 2. It's definitely not over here greater than 2 because greater than 2 is only the red and the blue. So if you have three answers, you want to represent the triple overlap piece, which is this guy right here. Okay, now how do I represent an area that's between two values? 
it's a compound inequality. All you have to do is put the smaller number on the left, the one, the bigger number on the right, the two, put the x in the middle, and then put your less than symbols. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the correct answer to number eight. Not x is greater than one, right? I mean, it's part of your answer, x is greater than one, but there's more to it. x is greater than one, but it has to be less than two because that's the only place there's a triple overlap piece. I hope we get it. Now, let me give you a different scenario. Like, I'm not even gonna do a problem, but let's just pretend that I'm working on a, a inequality, a logarithmic inequality, and I solve it, and let's say I get the answer like x is uh, greater than negative uh, two, and I got that as an actual answer, and then I get another answer that says uh, x is greater than zero, and then I get another one when I set the inside of the logarithm. Uh, let's say it says x is greater than uh, three, okay? So let's say I got those three answers. And let me do a quick sketch. We have zero, greater than that way. We have greater than three. Let's say three is over here, greater than that way. And we also have greater than negative two, negative two right there going that way. So what would your answer be if this were the case? Would you say the compound inequality between negative two and zero, compound inequality between zero and three, where is the triple overlap piece? That is correct. It's at the three to the great. So, I mean, if you extend the colors, right, going this way, going this way, there's no triple overlap piece right here. There's no triple overlap piece right here. It's just two. Right here's a triple overlap piece. So it's from the three going to the great. How do you represent that? that really is just x is greater than three. So sometimes you get a compound inequality. Sometimes you get a single inequality, right? And sometimes, like let's say you were, you were working on a problem. Here's a, a different example. Maybe I should get out of the way here. Let's just zoom in right here into nothing. Um, let, sometimes you're gonna be working on, on, let's say you only get two inequalities instead of three. Then you want the double overlap piece. But let's say you have three answers and let's say that one of them is a uh, negative one going to the left, the other one is uh, one going to the right, and the other one is a three going to the left. If you have three parts of your, an or three answers, and they don't overlap three times, then you would say no solution. Does that make sense? Okay, so these are all just different examples of this section. Now, I do admit, this is probably there's probably a, a lot to, to think of right now, especially because we did this before spring break. You might want to go back to Google Classroom, go to before spring break, go to section uh, 7.4. I think it was on a Wednesday before spring break or Tuesday before spring break. And you could watch the video that will help you out. Okay. But um, bottom line is if there's three answers, you want to represent the triple overlap piece. If there is no triple overlap piece, that'll be a no solution. All right. If there's only two answers, like, uh, for example, this guy would only have two answers, right? You would say eight, base eight on both sides. You'd end up with negative six X is less than eight to the one power um, is eight. Divide by negative six, divide by negative six. You get X is greater than eight six, which reduces down to four thirds. And it is negative. Okay, so that's one possible answer. The other one would be that this guy has to be uh, greater than zero. Negative six X has to be greater than zero. Sorry about my sloppy handwriting here. Divide by negative six, divide by negative six. You'll have X is less than zero. So you get those two answers, right? Now, right here, there is no triple overlap piece um, because there's only two parts of your answer. And if you do graph this on a number line, you have your negative four thirds over here on the negative side, and you have your zero over here on the right side of the negative number, and it does say less than, and it does say greater than, so obviously your answer will be between those two values because there's a double overlap piece. So that would be an X right here in the middle with the less than symbols right there. This would be your final answer for that one. I know I went through that kind of fast, I apologize. Um, again, if you need more help on this particular section 7.4, just go out to Google Classroom and go back to that section 7.4, watch those videos, and you should be good. But this one does require you to use a number line 
And that's only on inequalities because inequalities talk about an area of answers as opposed to equations. Those are just like x equals 5, x equals negative 7. You just solve it the way you normally would and you get one single answer. All righty. We also have um, 7.5, which was all about properties of logarithms, expanding, condensing, and of course, we're going to be focusing in on condensing, particularly when we're solving equations. Um, if you have log base uh, whatever of something plus log base that same base of something else, that plus sign, you're going to be able to condense, take those two logs and make them one single log, take the M and the N and multiply them together. That way it makes it smaller and nicer and uh, you'll be able to condense it using the product property. Or if you have a minus sign between two identical logs, you could condense them and put the M over the N and the minus ends up becoming division right there with a single log, right? Or if you have a number out in the front, you could raise that up to become the power right there as you see there and that's a power property. Um, let's see an example or two of that. That would be 7.5 and uh, let's take a look at number 12. Now again, uh, this is not an inequality, so you're not graphing them on a number line. This is an equation. Just do what you got to do. But remember, you need to condense first. In order to get rid of log base 8, you have to have log base 8 equals log base 8. That way you could raise both sides to become powers of base 8. So you can't raise both sides to become powers of base 8 yet because there's actually two of these logs on the left side of the equal sign. So let's first condense with the quotient property. What does that mean? I am going to take this log and that log and condense them together to be one single log. One single log base 8. And because it's division, I mean, I'm sorry, because there's subtraction between the two, I'm going to take the first one and divide it by the second one. So I will have uh, 48 divided by W. And you can put this in parentheses so you don't get confused. So we have condensed log base 8 of 48 minus log base 8 of w. We condensed it to log base 8 of 48 over w equals log base 8 of 4. Now that you have log base 8 on both sides, raise both sides to become powers of base 8. That way they eliminate. Hey, that kind of uh, rhymes. 8, eliminate. Okay, anyway, we have now the simple equation 48 over w equals 4. You don't want a fraction. Get rid of the fraction by applying multiplication. Multiply by W on both sides. You will end up with 48 equals 4W. And if you divide both sides by 4, you will get W equals 12. Ta-da! You see, it's easy, right? So we're going to be using the properties to condense. That way, you could get rid of the log once you have one single log as opposed to two logs, right? Or that way you could get rid of this multiplication of 5 by raising it right here and making it 2 to the 5th. And then using that quotient property to condense those two logarithms and have 2 to the 5th times 8 on that single logarithm. So I am running out of time here. This is already becoming a long video. I apologize. But again, everything's posted in Google Classroom if you need more help. But I believe this section is pretty straightforward. You condense it to be able to raise both sides to become powers of the base of your choice to get rid of logarithms. And the most uh, recent, the most recent uh, section was 7.6, and that's where we have uh, equations or inequalities that we want to solve, and we end up with decimals as answers. Nothing to be scared of, very straightforward, okay? So you want to get rid of uh, you want to bring down that B, that's an exponent, you're going to apply a log base 5 to both sides. That will eliminate, you will have a 3B equaling, now log base 5 of 106, that's where you have to go to either a scientific calculator, and it has to be one of the newer ones, it can't be like a 20 year old scientific calculator, it won't have the log button with different bases, or you could go to that log calculator online that I posted on Monday's post, all right? You could use that. Um, I'm using my scientific calculator, log base 5 of 106. 
is, we have 2.89755 And then I have to divide by three and divide by three, giving me my final answer. Divided by three on my calculator. I get 0 0.96585255415. And not only that, the instructions will tell you to round to the nearest ten thousandths position. We have the tenths, the hundredths, the thousandths, and the ten thousandths. And you have to look at the next one over to determine if the eight will stay an eight or actually go up. In this case, it will go up because the five does change the eight to a nine. So your final answer will be B equals 0 0.9659. Ta-da! So the, the last two sections that we're covering on the test um, are the same thing as always, but you're going to have to use either a scientific calculator or that online log calculator that I posted on Monday. Okay? Um, and 7.7 .7 is the same concept, but it's even easier because it's with base E, right? Base E. So you want to solve for X, you would have to add 3, add 3. You have 2 E to the X equals 4. You really have 2 times E to the X, so divide by 2, divide by 2, eliminate E to the X equals 2. And now, I don't want the x as an exponent, so I would have to get rid of that exponent situation by applying a log. What kind of log? Well, I have a base e on this exponent situation, so I would apply a log base e, which we all should know is ln. So apply an ln to both sides, and the ln of e will eliminate, the x will come down equals ln of 2, and believe it or not, even the old scientific calculators, yeah, even the 20-year-old scientific calculators have a natural log button, the LN button. So everybody should be able to type in LN of 2. Even your cell phones, if you tilt it sideways, if you have an iPhone, tilt it sideways, you have the scientific calculator, it has an LN button. And if you do LN of 2, it'll give you the decimal answer, uh, 0 0.6931471. And of course, we're doing the ten thousandths position, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. And we know that the uh, 4 will not change the 1, right? So there is your actual answer, 0 0.6931. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I did forget to mention that there's going to be this extra question, actually two questions that come from this right here. And remember... Um, when we're talking about somebody investing money, right here, it's Sarita is investing $1,000. That is the principal. Um, also, the rate that the bank is offering her is 3.4%. Uh, but what we need to do is write that percent, this percent right here, we need to write it as a decimal. Okay? And the formula will also be provided to you. So when we look at the formula... What we have here is A, that's the total amount with your principal being multiplied by the E button times rate times time as an exponent. So when you type in, when you type in R as your rate, please uh, type in the decimal by moving it over two places, one, two, so it would be 0 0.034, okay? So you're actually going to be typing in the decimal point 034 right here and then multiplying it by however many years. In this case, on the homework, they want you to multiply it by five years. So you would type in the five where the T is at. You would type in point three, I mean point zero three four where the R is at and you would type in a thousand right here. OK, now it's a different story if they ask you, like, how long will it take? for the account to reach 2,000, right? In other words, how long will it take for it to double from 1,000 to 2,000? Then, when you look at your formula, you're talking about saying that your amount is 2,000 because that's how much they want it to get to, to 2,000. Your principal is 1,000, the E is the E button, the rate is still 0 
but the time is the question, how long will it take? So what you'd have to do is plug it all in and then use a natural log to bring down the exponent to continue to solve the equation. I hope that kind of helps. Um, I would definitely uh, go back and, uh, and check out this problem on your homework.